Two of the most distinctive marks of the Christmas season are the singing of Christmas carols and the giving of gifts. And I think they're both connected. They're things that we do in a distinctive way at this time of year, that different than any other time of year. I believe these two practices are what we use when we need to express ourselves in words just simply aren't enough. You, know, you want to tell someone, for example, I love you. Well, that's good. You know, but somehow if you say there's, you use a love song and then you put a diamond ring with it, that has a bit more punch, doesn't it? Right? I love you means a bit more when you connect it to gifts and song. Right? So I, I think they both are connected to this overflowing of the generosity of our soul that happens at this time of year. The, the singing of Christmas carols, for example, I, I watch people at church. Like That's part of my gig. I see you when you're at church. And, and I know something about some of you. Some of you, I could play your favorite hymn five times in a row and you will not sing a single word of it. But if I start singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, you will open your mouths. I, I know that about you because I watch it. Right? There's something about Christmas carols that gets people to sing when they won't touch it any other time uh, of year. Right? The same thing with the give, giving of gifts. It, it, usually we're far more controlled in our giving of gifts if you think about it. Right? Think about how we give gifts most of the year. When do we give gifts? Birthdays. Birthdays. What else? Showers. There are all these times we give gifts. Who gets the gifts? One person, right? And let's not even talk about baby showers because it's really, the dad does not matter. It's about the mom, right? She's the one getting the gifts. He happens to be there dutifully writing down who gave what, if he is wise. So the giving of gifts, like birthdays for the Kuhn family, uh, Growing up, we, we, you'd have birthdays, and it was almost like you, you made sure to cut the cake so that everyone could then eat cake and be entertained by the person, one person opening the gift, right? It's kind of like a little bit of a show, right? So it's very controlled, one person, one, one. I don't know what it's like, was like when you were growing up opening gifts. In the Kuhn household growing up, when we started opening gifts, it was not a controlled thing where everyone watched and some, someone took notes about who gave what. Once that paper started flying, it was a free-for-all, right? There's this kind of rounds of gifts, and if you're not paying attention, you won't know what everyone got, because this paper goes flying, and that might be an aspect of having two young boys. Maybe you were more controlled with your children, I don't know. But you know, it was just kind of this exuberant, overjoying, lots of stuff, everything going flying. It was unlike any other gift-giving moment in the year, right? At Christmas, who gets gifts? Is it one person? Everybody gets gifts at Christmas, right? Everybody gets a gift. You come by my house on Christmas, I'll find a gift for you. Everybody gets a gift at Christmas. We sing in a different way than any time of year. We give in a different way than any time of year, right? This is a time of year. There's something going on here. We just need to express ourselves. The joy of this moment is bigger than what we can usually give, right? Who is the one saint we talk about most right now? Saint Nick? And you all know the story of St. Nick, the first St. Nick. He was the bishop of the Church of Myrna. Go look it up in Wikipedia. Great uh, story, M-Y-R-N-A, Myrna. And um, he gave a gift. He, he found out a family. They, uh, they needed a dowry for their, their daughters. They had three daughters. And without a dowry, you can't be wed. And if you can't be wed, you're doomed. Right? So does he give just to one of the daughters? No, he gives to all of the daughters. He doesn't give to the deserving daughter, the daughter with a high ACT score who had high prospects to really make a difference. He gave to all of them, right? And did he give a little bit, a couple pieces of silver? No, he gave bowls of gold. Why do you think we hang decorations? Why do we think we... We don't hang these because they're just convenient. We hang these in remembrance of the Bishop of Myrna who gave solid balls of gold. How much would it cost to buy a ball of, yeah, extravagant giving? It is fitting that we, we remember St. Nick at this day because he is the one who remembers and celebrated and showed us the extravagance of that first gift. The gift in, in whose name we, we gather this day, the gift of the birth of Jesus. The gift that is an extravagant gift. The gift that goes to everyone. That gift that causes even angels to sing, even shepherds to sing. Right? This is the gift that we celebrate this day. And so we simply cannot be joyous and extravagant enough. And so in these coming days, you're gonna get together and you're gonna eat with your family. Don't eat with your family. Feast, right? You know the difference? Don't just eat. Feast. 
Get into that food and love it. Don't just hang out to, with each other, but give of yourselves to each other. Spend time that is meaningful with each other. And at some point, you might be tempted to break into song and do not mumble along. I invite you to do something far better. I invite you to sing. And if someone hears you, it's okay. Right? It's okay. Just, just sing. Right? And in that spirit, I want you to stand right now and sing. Sing. Come on, stand. Non-rhetorical. Sing. We're going to sing joy.